Love them or hate them, dual cab utes have become the default family vehicle in Australia, and it's no surprise to anyone who pays attention to the sales figures. The top two selling vehicles right now in Australia are the Toyota Hilux and the Ford Ranger. In fact, take away the fleet sales figures, concentrate on the top end models, and it's Ford Ranger 1, Toyota Hilux 2. And that's why we've assembled these two dual cab utes. That one right there is a Ford Ranger Wild Track, and it has won every single comparison we've put it in, and it's going head to head against this new beast, the Mercedes-Benz X-Class, based on the Navara, and the one you're looking at here is the X250D Power. <laughs> Power, it's great, isn't it? Look, this will be interesting because while the Ranger is the most competent all-rounder in this field, um, and the Amarok is a more premium product, let's be honest, but it can't match the Ranger for safety inclusions and tech. So, if Mercedes-Benz wants to charge a premium price for this thing, it's gonna to have to take the fight right up to the Ranger. And Trent, remember that tradies spend upwards of 60 grand on these things for, for some pretty hard work. <laughs> That'd be no, uh, not at this end of the pricing spectrum anyway. So to test these two, we're gonna do exactly what buyers do, which is trundle around town with nothing in the tray. The Ford Ranger Wild Track uses a 3.2 litre, five cylinder turbocharged diesel engine that produces 147 kilowatts of power and 470 newton metres of torque. It's mated to a six speed automatic gearbox and uses 8.9 litres of fuel per 100 kilometres. On the load hauling front, it can tow up to 3,500 kilos and take just over 900 kilos of payload in the tray. The Mercedes-Benz X250D Power has a 2.3-litre four-cylinder engine and seven-speed automatic transmission. It makes 140 kilowatts and 450 newton metres. Its fuel usage is 7.9 litres per 100 kilometres and its tow rating is 3,500 kilograms with a payload of 1,021 kilograms. Now, mate, from the minute they first released images of this, there were two big questions for me that the X-Class really had to answer. One, does it look, does it feel, does it yep. appear to be Mercedes-Benz enough? Because regardless of whether it's based on a Navara, if you're buying something with a Merc badge on it, you want it to feel like a Mercedes-Benz. Yep. And number two, can they justify the price? Mm. Sure, it's only a couple of grand more than that thing, but again, if you're asking 62,000 or thereabouts for a truck, yep. you have to deliver. Right, so here, here are my first yep. impressions, right? So I've just hopped into this. All of these touch points feel really nice. And mm. I know it's probably not leather, but this yeah. leather stuff up on, on the doors and the dashboard, it all feels really good. Um, but the only thing for me, presentation-wise, there's a lot of shared stuff here with yeah, Nissan. Like that switch gear is Nissan. The key, <laughs> it's entirely Nissan, it's and Nissan, yeah. the, the dumbest thing in the world is when you leave the car, it comes up here saying, don't forget your key, and it shows a picture of a Mercedes-Benz key, but mm. it's actually a Nissan key, and it's just small things like that that, that really yeah, aren't sort of sitting it's, with it's, me. It's that skin deep thing, I mean, yeah. if you open the door and you look at the dashboard, um, to me that looks like a Mercedes-Benz yeah. dashboard, and as you said, certainly looks more premium than um, the other utes in the segment. And they haven't skimped on the finish back here either. Yeah, yeah, Same exactly. as the front, so that's pretty good. But I think infotainment's a big part of it too. This infotainment system's great because it's, it's a big leap forward from all of the other offerings yeah. in the segment, um, with the ex exception of Ford's Sync 3 system, which we'll see shortly. But no Apple CarPlay. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's just, yeah. And the USB is a little bit tricky to find. Mm. But look, that side of things is good. In terms of tech, you've got AEB, you've got the lane departure warning, which vibrates the steering wheel. An amazing 360 that camera. That camera is excellent. That is really cool. So you do sort of get a lot there in terms of tech. So it does feel like value for money. How are we talking in terms of storage though? What's it like back there? <laughs> yeah, um, could you just look after my phone Okay, mate, let me pop that yeah. away for you. It, it, just in the cup holder? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that kind of just goes so nowhere. So USB point is here in this tiny little compartment, which right, so doesn't have room for a phone. That's all that fits yeah, in there. Yeah, dust rag. So there's no room for a phone in there. There's a 12 volt connection up there, mm. but then the phone will be flapping around in the console falling onto the floor. Storage, you know, I said in the initial review of this thing at launch, yep. it's massively let down. In the rear seat, it's comfortable, there's heaps of room. I quite like the way that you sit a little higher than the yep. front, that's great, but there's no storage. You get no drop down armrest here, mm. no cup holders, quite small door pockets. Um, you do get a 12 volt plug and air vents back here. Yep. But in, in terms of storage, for people who drive these every day, you know, even if you're a trader, you're going to yeah. get in here with a wallet, a phone and yeah. keys and a cup of coffee. Yep. Where are you going to put it? And, and just quickly before we jump into the Ranger, can you just tell me what that is? 
Um, Aside from a giant waste of space. Yeah, yeah it looks like some kind of hovercraft <laughs> <laughs> leaning over the Let's go to the Ranger. <laughs> So Trent, we're in the Ranger now. This is a car that has dominated sales, and it's a car that Ford has admitted sells very well in the premium mix, so XLT Wildtrak. What do you reckon draws people to this car in terms of like build quality and the, and the materials? Yeah, look, I, th I think people love the look of it, mm. externally and internally, to be honest. This has got a pretty, what I would call a cool cabin. I like this wetsuit material they've yep. used. I like the way it's trimmed. It probably doesn't feel as premium as the Mercedes-Benz, even though, um, you know, the money's around about the same. Yep. There's, there's hard plastics on the tops of the doors. At least you're not leaning your elbow on hard plastic here. But in terms of the execution of the dash, um, the switch gear, the gauges, the way it looks, it doesn't feel as premium as the Mercedes-Benz. It does have all this driver tech and active info display, which is good. Um, and it's got way, way, way more st storage as well. But yep. the infotainment, I think Sync 3 is pretty good. Sync 3 is awesome. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, it's yep. so easy to use. You get all of those features built in. You talk about driver tech there. This doesn't have AEB, but with the electrically assisted steering, we're going to see stuff like AEB come in. We're going to see auto parking. Mm. Um, the other advantage, radar cruise control, which you yeah. don't get in the Benz, yeah. which I don't really understand. And just before you go on too, on the subject of steering, neither of these have reach adjustable steering wheels, which Crazy. you could argue is okay in a Ford, but you're buying a Mercedes Benz, you probably want reach adjustment as well as height, yeah. I would say. Um, and unlike the other one, uh, the mobile phone's not flying around everywhere. You've got <laughs> USB plugs up there and actual storage for it. But you know, the coolest thing back here. So I've got plenty of, of legroom. Our seat position is, is virtually identical. Great minds. Mm. Um, and I have uh, good knee room, good headroom. But down here, I've got 12 volt socket. I've also got a 240 volt That's outlet. That's a big deal. So yeah. I'm going to stick, uh, you know, camp chargers or whatever in there. Uh, center armrest, two cup holders. So a perfect divider there between the passengers. And it's it's an open airy environment, it but it feels a little narrower than the X-Class. Yeah, which is interesting because the Navara we originally thought might have been a tighter cabin, but yeah. it isn't. Um, but I think overall, it's very hard to separate these two because where that looks more premium, mm. this actually has more user-friendly functions and room in it. And I think another place these are going to be really close is in mm. drivetrains yeah. out on the road. So let's go for a drive. Now, mate, the engine in this thing, you'd hardly call it refined. It's, it's pretty noisy. However, it sounds good. It does sound good. It's got a good engine note to it, yeah. However, I think it's a really good pairing with the gearbox, and the engine really has always been a range of strong point, hasn't it? Yeah, that's it. It's got a really strong mid-range, and when you get on it, like on the line, it just moves nicely. It is a little sensitive at times, so it is hard to get that modulation, especially if you're off-road. Uh, but speaking of off-road, if you do ever go off-road, it's very easy to select. You've got to turn, uh, rear differential lock, and hill descent control. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, absolutely. Now, steering and braking. The, the braking, probably in repeated emergency stops in this thing, won't be as good as the X-Class because it's got disc brakes. However, it's adequate in this. We've never had any issues in testing ranges. I reckon steering's always been really good. The electric power steering system that Ford's used is really, really good. It's, it's light enough at low speed and not too heavy yep. um, when you're moving around, but it weights up nicely once you are moving. And we did mention earlier that the electrically assisted steering means that in the future, when they do finally bring uh, you know, AEB, which we've seen them testing, they'll be able to do the self-parking feature and all the other things that require an electrically assisted rack. With the hydraulic unit in the bends, that's not going to happen for no. quite some time. It isn't. And look, I think that leads into the next discussion point for these things because, as we said, most people drive these high-end ones around unladen. Yeah. Now, the Navara has coil springs and we've spoken about that at length. The Mercedes-Benz has retuned versions of those coil springs and a redesigned effectively rear end. And yet, it's very hard to separate these two in terms of ride quality. Yep. They're still both a bit jiggly. They're not perfect. They're not awful by any means, but they're not perfect in terms of ride. They still both jiggle around. Yeah, and that's the thing. This still uses leaf springs, which gives you superior load carrying capacity. Yep. But the big advantage here is that Ford has done all of the ride and handling tuning for this car in Australia. So yeah. the roads that we're on right now, there goes another, another wild track. Another wild track. Um, the roads that we're on right now are designed for this, or rather the car's designed yeah. for these types of roads. So you do get that confidence, but it really does fall down. And, and again, we're going into territory here that no one's ever going to do. But if you do find yourself going through a few corners, this 
rolls a lot. And that's where the X-Class is fantastic. The actual handling of that thing is probably better than any dual cab ute I've ever tested. You can hear me jiggling over these bumps <laughs> and talking about the ride. But the handling of the X-Class is probably better than any dual yeah. cab ute I've tested. Um, it's very flat through corners. The hydraulic steering that you mentioned feels nicely weighted at speed. It turns in sharply. It's got plenty of rear end grip as well. Um, I think it's a great package. However, it is compromised in terms of load carrying, as we said. Yep. And, you know, the argument with all of these dual cabs, we keep saying it, none of them are perfect. Yep. Okay, one final test before we get into the X-Class. Drop down to 60 and punch it to 100. Yep. I'm keen to see how this fares with, and that's a typical sort of overtaking range yep. if you are sort of getting stuck so that's into 60 it. There. there it goes. And flat to the boards. Yep. Okay, so it's kicked down Back there. Back one gear, that's 80. Feeling 90, 100, the right there. And as yeah, you said, it's good. that engine note's pretty good too. All right, mate, let's give this X-Class a crack. <laughs> So Trent, we're in the X class yep. and I have some good news to report, mate. What's that? And that is that this doesn't feel anything like a Navara. Really doesn't. It's very quiet. I, I, at launch, was really surprised by the cabin refinement and insulation. The engine, which is a lot louder in a Navara, it, you can barely hear it. It, it. This is the most refined dual cab yep. I've tested. And that's the thing, you, you can link this engine and driveline combination back to the Navara, but I'm finding here that uh, when you do sort of get stuck into it, it's keen to get moving. It's making the right noises and not intruding into the cabin. Same with the road noise as well. We're finding that it's, it's just not too intrusive into no. the cabin. Gearbox is good. Gearbox is great. Yep. One thing I did notice, this is called the power. Mm. Um, I would have thought maybe the power would have uh, paddle shifters. Or more power. Or more power. <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be nice. Yeah, the paddle shifted um, one's interesting, isn't it? It's, you know, you don't necessarily no, need it in a dual cab, but, but it should be included, I would have thought. Yeah, because I know with the, with the Ford, if you slide that across, it goes into sport mode, yeah. and I don't need to do anything. But now I'm forced to start yeah. faffing with, yeah. with gears and stuff. Now the ride. Yeah. Now this, this is the thing that, uh, that is interesting, because in and around the city, it's actually quite good. Yeah. And out here, it, it is a little bit busy, but where the Ranger is busy in the sense that it's sort of picking up everything and it's vibrating through the cabin, this isn't picking up as much, but it is. it has a little bit of a shimmy over mm. sharper bumps. And that's exactly what the, the Navara kind of does, where you get it at the front and yeah. then it sort of sends it to the back. My issue is that with coil springs, it should actually be better than it is. It's, it's probably marginally better than the Ranger in general out here, but it should be a lot better because it's a much more refined package in the way that the coil spring rear end is designed. Yeah. So it probably should be better than it is and it's not quite as good, but I reckon the big difference is the handling. If you hook oh, in, yeah. this handles well. So we've just come up through a few bends and you just point and shoot with yeah. this thing. You can confidently yeah. get stuck into the throttle. I found with the Ranger, if you, if you do uh, get in it a little early, it will start stepping out sideways. And that's partly due to the, the all-terrain jewelers that it's got on it. These are sort of more rotor oriented. Right, this yeah. is similar to the type of tyre you'd find on a Range Rover Sport or something like that. And it is motoring along here. You do hear the vibration yeah. in our voices <laughs> over this stuff. Um, and, it, and it is slightly firmer there than the Ranger. But the steering in terms of its weight, this is, this is really good for a hydraulic system. Yep. I thought all hope was lost for hydraulic systems with the Navara, because <laughs> that thing was pretty average. Pretty average. Um, steering all sits nicely less in the hand. Less turns lock to lock than the Navara as Far well. Less. Far and, less. And you're right, at lower speeds, you notice that it's heavier, uh, especially than the yep. Ranger. But at this kind of speed, it's pretty good. Yep. The brakes are excellent. Yeah, brakes Really, are really good. And you do notice um, that this has got rear discs when you really stand on them if yep. you have to. You notice it's got rear discs. Okay. What about your little acceleration thing? Well, I was thing just there? about to suggest that. You took the words right <laughs> out of my mouth. So there we go, down to 60, digital speedo, which is great. And straight onto the board. And not it's a, a lot of wobble there for it to kick back. <laughs> 70, 80, 90, 100. Mm. I reckon the Ranger could be quicker. I think the Ranger feels faster. The thing with these twin turbo systems in a lot of vehicles, there's a little bit of a hole until yeah. they start to get working. Um, and because it's a smaller engine, it doesn't necessarily have the torque to start with yeah. before the turbos exactly. start to work. So it's this, yeah, this felt like it was a little slower than the Ranger. But I'm very happy with it so far. And if you think that's the only discussion that goes on when we're out road testing vehicles, you'd be sorely mistaken. That's got really good air vents. The, the shape of them's excellent. Yeah, but mate, They're you can circular. actually plug something in here with the 240 volt outlet. But that's got a 12 volt outlet. Engineered in Australia. That's got rear air vent. Designed in Australia as well. 
<laughs> it is too. But it's got rear air vents. Five cylinders instead of four. That's got a useless chrome sports bar that you'll never use. Okay, mate, segment leader. Yep. And pretender to the throne. Actually, that's been happening a lot lately, Hyundai i30N <laughs> and Volkswagen Golf that's GTI. True. But we have the established leader. We have the pretender to the throne. Give me the lowdown on your thoughts about the X-Class. Okay, this has surprised me in yeah. a good way. So everything's great there, it drives well, mm. that sort of thing. But I reckon this is more what the Navara should have been yeah. as opposed to a Mercedes-Benz product. And I think that's probably part of the fact that, you know, this isn't their engine, it's not their gearbox. Yeah. And potentially when the V6 comes, that's gonna solve all those issues. They're so close in so many areas. I mean, the ride particularly for me, yeah. unladen as we've tested today is interesting because they're very, very similar. If this is better, it's degrees, yeah. it's marginal. Um, whereas this is stronger in other areas. I, I think this probably doesn't handle as well as that, obviously, but this rides almost as well. Yeah. Cabin's very even, it's hard to pick. Um, I think the interesting thing though is the point you made that this is a good vehicle, but it's yeah. probably where the Navara should have been. And it's let down by just small things like yeah. the Nissan Key. Yeah. You can't put it into low, yeah. uh, sorry, rear diff lock without being in low range. Yeah. It's just simple things like that, the mm. uh, Nissan switch gear around the place. Yeah. Simple things that they should have got right. Okay, so I don't think that this is highway robbery for 63 yeah. grand any more than this is for 60. I mean, the profit margin in these things oh, is a joke, huge. as we know, um, across the board in any of them. Really, probably only the Triton and now the Colorado yeah. are legitimate at 40 odd grand. So on the subject of money, you've got 62 <laughs> or three to spend. What are you buying? Mate, I've got to be honest. Yeah. Um, if I had my choice, mm. I love the surety of full-time all-wheel drive, yeah. and I just heard on the radio before mm. some drive-away deals on the Amarok. <laughs> yeah, there we I go. I get the Amarok V6, Volkswagen to be honest. Volkswagen Amarok. But, okay, look, yeah. I've said since the Amarok came out, I think it's the best all-rounder in the segment. It's just the safety thing that lets it down. So, like you, if I didn't need the second row, if I didn't yeah. have kids, Amarok all day, every day because of the all-wheel drive. However, that's a real cop-out, because yep. we're testing these yes. two. So, X-Class versus Ranger, where does your money go? Just here. Yeah, Ford Ranger in yep. this dodgy Probably orange color. Probably not wild track, I'd get the XLT. <laughs> XLT's a good one. And I'd be happy. Okay, Ranger for me as well. So unanimous win to the Ranger. Let us know what you think. Have we uh, completely muffed this up? <laughs> uh, let us know in the comments below. Uh, we're very keen to get your feedback. In the interim though, head to caradvice.com to see all the latest news on the Ford Ranger, the Mercedes-Benz X-Class, and check out our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe.